Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Subscription E-Commerce Live. It's April 6th. We are joined today by Nikki Elbaz, a copywriting queen, is what some people call her. Um, she is an expert, especially at email copywriting. So she's going to teach us to write subscription emails that increase like all of these great acronyms, right? Your AOV, your CLV, your CTR, and some other ones. Um, some that um, we could even make up on the spot if we wanted to. I saw a really cool one from Ann Hanley the other day that was like a response, right? It, it was like how many people had responded personally to the newsletter she sent. Nice. So it was like a reply to write or something like that. So there's lots of fun things that you can do with email, but especially in subscription e-commerce, you are looking at some of those that indicate um, long-term happiness as well as uh, increase in, in what they're buying from you and, and satisfaction along those lines. So this is um, an editorial approach we take. Uh, we are ARPU. I am from ARPU. Nikki is from NikkiElbass.com. Um, but uh, the only promotional thing you will hear in, in this entire session happens right here. And then we'll just get right into um, the, the helping people write better emails. But, so ARPU provides upcoming shipment notifications that increase AOV and LTD, LTD, excuse me, uh, the acronym talk Make up just made acronym me stumble. Something, it's something. Lifetime deal is what LTD is, and I'm, that's not what I'm going for. Lifetime value is what we're going for. While reducing your churn with two-click upsells and delays. So they get an email, it tells them their order is coming, and it says like, hey, click here if you want to add this product um, to that order or click here if you want to delay. So a really quick way to give a subscriber control over um, what's happening with their subscription. So this includes some custom messages based on the subscription product and or your renewal count. So you could kind of create loyalty um, baked into those emails. Like, hey, it's been six months. We're so excited. Here's a free item. Just claim it. We work with Recharge. Shopify and Big Commerce. So if you're on Recharge using Shopify or Big Commerce, come check us out at getarpu.com. Seth is going to drop in a couple of links right now. Um, one of those is to our campaigns feature. One of those is to Nikki's email newsletter, which I highly recommend you subscribe to. And the last is to the newsletter that accompanies this session, if you stumbled in here somehow through someone else's link and you want to make sure not to miss another episode, we go live every other Wednesday and we talk about different topics that matter to subscription sellers. So that's all I've got. I'm ready to kick it over to Nikki. Um, can you tell us just a little bit about yourself beyond, you know, like your royal queen status and who you've worked for um, in the email? world. I, I would think that everyone knows what a queen does. No. Yes. <laughs> Follow my of royal Twitter feed. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Okay. So um, actually, you know what? I have some slides about it. So I'll just Ooh. do the slides instead of boring you twice. Screen share. Oh, 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 I get screen share powers. <laughs> it's very, it's very select people that I allow to have screen share powers. All right. Can, Can y'all hear my dog in the background? I'm going to mute myself while she talks, just in case. Louis Pecan can get feisty. <laughs> um, you can see my, my uh, screen? Yes, we can. Awesome. Okay, cool. Oh, okay, so like Ashley said, this is what we're talking about. And here's where the intro bit comes in. I'm Nikki. <laughs> um, so I run a micro agency where we work with some awesome brands, um, many of them e-commerce, many of them SaaS. Um, and what's super cool about working for both industries is that we can see different cool things that each industry is doing and, and play into the different pieces and, and transfer them back and forth to each other, especially subscription related stuff. Cause a lot of uh, all SaaS is subscription related. E-commerce has a lot of subscription and just playing around with that and, you know, looking to, you know, SAS has a lot of like data-driven approaches. E-commerce has a lot of um, behavioral-driven approaches. So we kind of marry the two together for each of our clients and it's super awesome. Um, so I'm really excited to do subscription e-commerce emails specifically because it's like, it's right there in the middle. It's, it's awesome. 
So that's the little intro. Um, and ready to get into uh, writing better emails for subscriptions. All right, let's do it. Yes, let's chow. I, I'm sorry, I had like a mouse that wouldn't do what I wanted it to do for a second there. <laughs> no. All right, you lead the way. Um, just so everyone knows, we highly encourage question asking during these sessions. I will be asking them like as they vomit out of my mouth, but you should be encouraged to drop them in the chat or say, hey, Seth, I got a question. Can you ask it for me, et cetera? So that we, it's almost like inviting interruption. Right. So Nikki, beware. I might just jump in at any point and barrage you. All right. I am warned. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So why are subscription emails so critical? So hey, if we're if we're going with interruptions, who wants to answer? Nobody does. Everybody hates these kinds of uh put you on the spot kind of things. <laughs> because I no spent longer. my money. I spent money on something and I want to know what's happening with the money I spent right? Like, especially e-commerce. That's why I feel like they're critical. Does anyone disagree? Like, I want to know when I'm next being charged and what's coming and when. Cool, cool. Any other thoughts? All right. We won't put anyone else on the spot. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, you don't need me to tell you that retaining customers is more effective than acquiring customers. Everybody knows this set from HBR, right? One to five. Um, but of course, because this is a webinar, obviously I have to quote some stats at you and bore you with you know, stuff that you already know. Um, so you get five times more expensive to acquire a new customer, 5% increase in retention, um, plus a 25 to 95% profit increase, um, 60 to 70% 70, 70 success rate selling to existing customers versus a five to 20% to new customers. Um, so, you know, Look at these numbers and then tell me that you're not going to prioritize getting your subscriber emails in place. These emails are super critical to succeed at subscriptions. You know, it's, it's, you have this amazing existing customer base and they want to know what's happening with their stuff. Um, and if you want to retain them, then you gotta, you gotta keep them in the loop. Um, so if the goal of these emails is retention, why can't I just repurpose my VIP emails, right? That the goal of VIP emails is also retention and, and you know, all that kind of good stuff. Um, so why, why can't you just repurpose your VIP emails? Why do you um, need like specific subscription emails? Um, so this is such an excellent question. I, I this, whoever wrote these slides, they're brilliant. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, so, you can just uh, you know have this idea of like okay let's let's tweak them to the subscriber lifecycle and use these VIP emails. But if you actually create your own subscriber emails, you're way better off. And here's why: um, VIP customers is like dating, and subscribers is like marriage. Now I know this is a really really tired metaphor. I know you've probably heard it before, but hear me out because there is something that most people don't talk about when they mention this metaphor that I think is really really important. So dating is new, it's exciting, it's romantic, and marriage is work. There's a lot more maintenance in a marriage than there is in a less committed relationship. It's so easy to get bogged down by who's taking out the garbage, or rather who isn't taking out the garbage, um, and paying the bills and all the boring, blah, technical maintenance stuff. Um, and it's just a lot more work to make the fun and the romance a natural part of the relationship. Oh, you hey. look like you have something to say. <laughs> Seth's getting married in May, just, just oh so you know. So <laughs> it's gonna get be ready, wonderful. Seth, because your messaging has to change. Okay? Take out the garbage. <laughs> Set a reminder. By the way, May is a good month to get married, just by the way. Um, <laughs> May 27th. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot more work. Um, to, to keep that fun subscription. If you have that subscription, it's awesome. You have that amazing relationship, but you have to keep it fun because um, VIP emails are usually focused on perks and discounts and yay, fun. And, and there's like a lot of naturally 
it's just, you know, there's, there's education. They're so feel good. They're so fun. Um, and then subscriber emails can get a little tedious. You know, they're just confirmations and updates and confirmations and updates. And you have to work a little bit harder to add these nurturing, nurturing aspects to them. So it can be amazing because you've got this commitment, but it also can be really stale. So you have these amazing customers. They are here. You want to retain them. And you want to keep nurturing them so that all this technical, boring maintenance stuff becomes part of the awesomeness of the relationship. Make sense? Yes, I love it. Um, was that a proposal? <laughs> <laughs> the good news is that this work will pay off um, because if you look at the rates, um, Thank you, Arpu, for both hosting this webinar and creating this awesome infographic. Um, these are some of the rates from their customers. And you can see that the click-through rates, the open rates, the conversion rates on these boring update emails, your shipping is happening soon, the, 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 they're through the roof. Like these aren't numbers that you get from your normal marketing campaigns. And obviously our poo is super awesome and has amazing, super easy upsells and all that kind of thing. I know you said no pitching, but like, come on, it's such an awesome product. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but, um, um, you know, all transactional emails have these amazing rates because your customers just did something. They're behavioral triggered and behavioral triggered emails work really well. If they're super relevant, they're, they're top of mind. They just did something. They want to see confirmation for it. So the rates for these emails is so high that even though they're boring, people are reading them. And if you make them not boring, then people will love them. So it's just a super, super opportunity. Yes, it's work to create these subscriber emails, but it's an amazing, amazing opportunity. Um, all right. So Yes, I stole that from the top performer decks. Um, so let's get into, oops, sorry, I skipped a slide. Um, no, I didn't. Sorry, um, the subscriber stages um, and the emails to send at each point. Cool? Yes, yes. So you're talking about like breaking it down between I'm a fresh brand new subscriber to I've been here a long time. Yes, that would or is actually that be a cool stage too. What I was thinking is not oh, yet not yet, and then the subscriber, turn subscriber. But that's um, a cool idea. We should break it down even more. I think. Yeah, well, I feel like there's just like so many places you can go with that. When we talked with Eli Weiss when he was at Olipop, mm -hmm. he talked a lot about making the subscription um, experience feel like a journey. Mm. And so, uh, and I feel like um, Kristen LaFrance kind of touched on that a little too, and she's at repeat. So she's in the zone where you're a repeat customer, right? Mm -hmm. But it was just this kind of like, what is it that makes being a subscriber special? And how does it go from being a mundane notification-based communication to a, a, an aspirational journey that they're taking with your brand and your product and your mission and, and kind of like, where are they in their, especially if it's a consumption-based product, like that is intended to improve your lifestyle mm -hmm. or something. So it's like, are you three months in or are you nine months in to like this commitment to better, um, healthier eating or something like that. And so he, yeah. he created kind of a thing that was an arc, but you have to get to a subscriber phase from being not a subscriber first. So tell us, tell us about this. Oh, but I'm so curious about this. This is so cool. I'm going to have to go find that uh, webinar that you're talking about. Um, because it's kind of like marrying that, that tooth, haha, um, those two things, the VIP customer and the subscriber. So you have the subscriber and then you have the VIP subscribers, which could be really cool. Mm -hmm. Especially, I love the consumption-based idea of like, now your life is getting better because of our products. So cool stuff. All right. Um, okay. So hopefully, by the way, that arrow from current subscriber to turn subscriber doesn't happen too often, but we do have to keep it in mind. 
it's uh, good emails to send, so we'll go through them. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is run through the emails, the, the highest priority emails that you should be sending within each of these stages. And then we're gonna do teardowns of, sorry, not teardowns, bad word, audits of the different, those specific emails, um, just getting a little more detailed and like what should be within those emails. So just first an overview of each stage, what should be in the emails, and then one by one, all the different emails. All right. so. Not yet a subscriber. Um, so this is gonna sound like a no brainer, um, but you wanna promote your subscription to customers. Um, by the way, customers, not subscriber, not email subscribers. Um, there are some instances where it makes sense to promote it to people that aren't customers, but make sure that anytime you are sending a subscription promotion to non-customers, you're being very strategic about it um, because usually a subscription is a much harder sell than a one-time purchase unless you have one of those subscriptions that, um, you know, they're very easy to cancel or um, people are just more likely to do it because your perks are so awesome. Um, but you want to just make sure that you're being very, very strategic. Otherwise, promote to customers and not to people that are just on your list. So the emails to send are post-purchase nurture. After they bought from you, they got the, their, the product, um, then you want to send them a nurture email that a campa campaign like within that automation telling them, Hey, you purchased awesome. Here's a, a way to keep getting our product. We have subscription. Here's what's so awesome about it. We'll see one soon. Um, replenishment emails. So kind of similar, but when they're ready for a new one, instead of just getting a new one, Hey, why don't you get a subscription instead? Um, and then one of campaigns, just general, um, you know, campaigns, um, that those ones are obviously, you can send them to your subscribers, you can send them to your customers and you typically wanna send them to your customers. Cool. Yes, um, let's get into kind of a little more detail around what a one-off campaign would be. So I'm imagining if it's for customers or mm -hmm. VIP customers, that's more like we released a new flavor or we're running a special on the white variant of this product this month because we have too much in stock or something along those lines, right? <laughs> but but like whatever the thing is, is that you are promoting, that is your one-off campaign. Might be yes. seasonal, might be product-based, might be um, reflecting a desire that people have expressed. Like, I wish we could buy three of these at once for this price instead of uh, individually or whatever. So that to me is the equivalent of the one-off campaign, which to your point could, could be interpreted incorrectly if it's not positioned well to a subscriber, because as a subscriber, I'm getting a notification that my shipment is coming soon, like once a month. And to get things in between, they need to be worth opening because otherwise they feel like, like, oh, I'm already subscribed to something from this brand. What they're sending me, if it's not highly aligned, like same product category, or there's like a reason it's relevant to me, then I might see that as like, gosh, they're just bombarding me, trying to get me to buy more and more. Like, don't they appreciate what I'm already subscribed to? Yeah. So I actually use the word subscriber wrong. I mean, it's not wrong. There's, there's the email subscribers. Yeah. yeah, yeah within the, the context of what we're doing, right. Um, but you mentioned a really great point. So what I meant was that people who have never bought from you and are just email subscribers, often you don't want to be promoting the subscription yet because they're just not ready for it. They haven't even bought right, a right, right. product. They don't want I, this, this is mostly for, for consumption-based products. If you have something that, you know, let's say seltzer, right? I've never bought once. I don't want to buy every five months, you know, every, every month, I don't want a new case every month yet because I didn't even try your flavors yet. Um, so sometimes that works, but often it's just an easier sell to just give them that one-time purchase. Um, if you have great perks where it's just so easy for them to say yes to a subscription and they know that they can cancel, then it makes sense to promote a subscription, but otherwise just promote the products one at a time. And then once they're a customer, once they've bought once, that's when you can start promoting the subscription to them. But you mentioned a really, really great point that also your subscribers, your product subscribers 
should be suppressed on all these campaigns because they're already exactly they're already a subscriber they don't want to be getting all these annoying emails of hey join our subscription hey join her subscription um, that's annoying to them because they are a subscriber but sometimes it does make sense too because you know they want to hear about the new flavor too so you might want to do a custom um campaign to subscribers that's you know saying like here's what's coming next month um to you uh like a little more personal knowing that they are the subscribers um or you could just do like a bucket um kind of thing like here's what's coming next month and the people that are not subscribers will um actually that's not true because you'll, you'll need a button of like here subscribe so yeah segment it send uh, different ones to your subscribers where it's just like an update where it's just exciting for them. And then the camp, the, the customers, the, the people who are not subscri subscribers will get this prompt to subscribe to get the variant. Yeah. Yeah. Or you could even like reward a subscriber with like early access to mm -hmm. the new flavor or something along those lines, which could be within the shipping soon notification, or it could be a standalone like, hey, thanks for being a subscriber. Just wanted to let you know we have this new uh, product release and we're giving our uh, subscribers first access to, to try it out and tell us what you think at this price or something like that. So there's ways to um, build in like relationship there. Like you are, you are earning more points with them for helping them feel what it is, that perk of subscribing. Yes. Exactly. Got it. You got to give gifts in a marriage, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Love it. All righty. Cool. So that's the not yet a subscriber bucket where we're trying to get them to become subscribers. And by the way, that's one more thing about the one off campaigns is that you can just send a one off campaign that says, Hey, we have an awesome subscription. Do you want to join? Here's what's awesome about it. And you just list out all the perks of being a subscriber and then you send it. Um, so obviously if you have a new flavor, if you have, um, you know, a promotion running or anything like that, like, obviously that's a great time to send a subscription campaign, but you can also just send the subscription campaign, just talking about your subscription. Like that is a totally valid campaign idea and it can totally work and get you new subscribers. So or maybe if they've bought it five times. <laughs> Definitely like, send your hey. VIP customers a hundred percent. Yes. All right, cool. So now the people that actually are subscribers at the moment, um, there's that initial order confirmation. Like the first time they become a subscriber, you want to welcome them into the subscription. It's a different welcome than welcoming them into like the, uh, ecosystem either through like um, a lead cap or even as a customer now they're a part of the subscription so that's a different kind of welcome um, upcoming order notifications or uh, you know use our for that um, and then um, you can within those you can upgrade your tier you can do an add-on so these are kind of like the upsell sort of emails within those um, and then also you want to make sure that within those, there is an option to pause so that you lower your turn because if people are not ready to get the next shipment, this is a great, um, opportunity for them to stay within the subscription without canceling. Um, and then there's shipper, shipping confirmation, delivery confirmation, um, and the perks, the gifts, we want to be nurturing them. So in addition to all of these update emails and confirmation emails and all the kind of like tedious maintenance emails we want the nurturing emails as well they can be tied to it and the, the, it's great if you tie it together um, but also just throughout sprinkling it throughout their customer journey with you spoil them you know send them those gifts any questions oh wait one more note um subscriptions when i say subscriptions i typically mean like recurring shipments um, and memberships is like curated boxes. So the add-ons is going to be for the subscriptions and the memberships is going to be, you know, upgrading tiers and that kind of thing. So there's just, you'll have to just kind of think about what perks you can offer when you are giving these like shipping soon notifications um, based on what kind of subscription you have. Cool. You're muted, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I was saying, yes, I love this. And um, <laughs> one thing uh, that I wanted to mention that we came across last holiday season 
that some clients implemented is a um, within their upcoming shipment notification, but you could likely do this outside of it as well. Um, but it just made sense the way we packaged it to put it in is a um, an option to put a gift block. And this is hard to articulate because we have noticed that there are a lot of words that get double uses in this industry and gifts is one of those, right? We have merchants, we have subscribers, email subscribers, all these things. So when I say gifts in this instance, I mean something different than what you had on the last slide, which was like gifts, the merchant is giving the subscriber. This enables subscribers to give gifts to friends. So that's almost taking a notification, like a critical notification email and making it a marketing tool to go beyond them adding something to their purchase by adding, I mean, they're adding something to their purchase, but they are sending a friend your product. So it's timed well, if it's like, it's their sixth subscription and you're giving them a chance to give someone something for free or like great discount or whatnot. So maybe they're not giving them a subscription, but they're giving them the product that they subscribe to. Like, hey, here's this thing I was telling you about. And it becomes, it's like, now those people are on your list to, to engage with and nurture, et cetera. So fun ways I think um, exist and you can kind of get creative with them based on what your product is, right? To help people, um, I would call that like amplify or expand your, pro your customer base. Yeah, that's like a referral on steroids because mm -hmm. like, it's not just like, oh, try it and you get $5 off if you purchase. It's like, here's the product. Now, now that you love it, you're gonna buy it, you know? So it's, it's really bringing them in really well. It's, that's awesome, yep. really cool idea, nice. Awesome. All right. Um, okay. So once we lose our subscribers, um, we want to make sure that they leave with a good taste in their mouth. Um, and also we want to get some data, you know, like it's a, it's a good plus to understand why they're leaving. Um, and obviously if we can win them back, that's even better. So we want to send a cancellation confirmation. Um, we want to get feedback and we want to send them some win backs. So those are the ones within the churn subscriber. And we are ready to get into the actual emails unless you have anything else to add. I do. I thought of something else. Oh, it, okay. It's astounding, right? Um, if you go back to the thinking about the difference between um, what you email subscribers and what you email members, if members are getting a, a um, curated box, we have also seen some people change their upcoming shipment notification every month because they're doing a, like a box um i think it's wolf pack right like they're doing different gifts for your dog um and they're seasonal but there are some that are not seasonal but there's a few seasonal things in there like i don't know there were some like puppy goggles for winter or something it was super cute right but this is for people who love their dogs right and they want a curated box once a month for their dog um they go to the effort to change that message every month since they send everything all at once, like at one time period during the month, they go in and then they add upsell opportunities based on what went out in previous months. So say your dog really enjoyed that particular chew toy or that particular treat that was in the curated box the previous month, you have the opportunity then to add as a one-time purchase that same thing that you've already, you know, they enjoy, especially if it's a consumable, it's a great idea. But if it's a toy they really loved and you want to give a friend with a dog that toy, like you've now got a path to, to purchase that thing that was in the curated box. Mm, that's cool. That so it's kind of taking the add-ons that mostly these subscriptions can upsell on and letting the curated, the memberships Mm -hmm. also offer add-ons as well. Yeah. Like, do you want more of that thing you just got a taste of, right? Like, because we have excess stock. <laughs> Leftover from last. <laughs> exactly. <month's box. laughs> exactly. Yeah. Cool. Nice. That's super awesome. So that's All a right. good idea for you, you membership box people. 
Yeah, now you can offer some add-ons. Super awesome. And get rid of some old stock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at some actual emails. Um, we'll start with the not yet subscribers. So here we have a post-purchase nurture from Cure. Um, and it's basically, you know, after somebody purchased, somewhere down the line, they send a, hey, here's a subscription. Um, kind of like what I was saying, that, that one-off mm -hmm. campaign where you're just like, hi, here's our subscription, here's all the perks. Um, although this comes after a purchase. So it's, it's a great time period to be, um, you know, sending um, you know, like information about a subscription because they already bought, now they're kind of uh, within that um, mindset of potentially joining a subscription. Um, so we have, they're sending it to their customers post-delivery. Um, they have a nice emotional and tangible benefit of subscribing. Can you guys see it or is it too small? I can see your notes, but I'd love for you to theatrically read um, okay. the emotional and tangible benefits. <laughs> so it says, join the Cure Club. So here's one thing you can put on autopilot. Save 15% when you sign up for monthly deliveries of Cure. So it has the, the emotional benefit, which is it's on, it's on autopilot. You don't have to be thinking about it anymore. And then there's the 15%, like that's the, the, um, the more tangible benefit, um, that when you subscribe, you're saving money. So it's like a nice balance of, of those two benefits. Um, and then plus for a limited time, use code, blah, 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 to save an additional 20% off your subscription. Uh, that's only 86 cents per pack. Join now. Um, so what's interesting is that they have this urgency push of this promotion, this, this um, coupon, right? Um, but because this comes post-delivery, this actually could be a really interesting, like they might not need that urgency play with the coupons because there is a natural urgency because it's almost at a replenishment point. So it'll be interesting to test and see, is that coupon necessary to get the conversion? Because the natural urgency might actually be enough. Um, and then here's just like a list of the, the benefits of being a subscriber. Um, it's just everything is laid out nice and clear. Um, and then there's like a how to join section, which is same deal. Like it's just laid out really clear. The expectations are just set within the email. So there's nothing super creative or amazing about this email, but it's so clear and straight to the point that it's just effective. I mean, I'm assuming but I think so <laughs> um, because it's, it's, it just has everything laid out and it's, it has the benefits and then, then it has all the, the different um, features that make it a no brainer to be joining, especially for this kind of product, which, you know, it is a consumable that you want to just be, um, you know, subscribe to. So it's just a, a solid email, even though there's nothing that is like screaming amazing about it, it's actually an amazing email. All right. Next one. So this one again is from Pure. Um, whoops. Um, so this one actually comes as a replenishment, um, which, okay, we'll, we'll talk about it on the comments. So it says running low on Cure, we've got you. Place an order now and get $10 off with code thirsty, which you should never be. Questions, feedback, we'd love hearing from you. Respond directly to this email and we'll be in touch. Hydrate me. Um, so again, sending to customers post delivery. Um, it's really fun. It's cute. Um, but they are encouraging an order, which is okay, fine, encourage an order, but they could really be encouraging a subscription at this point because this is a replenishment email. They're running low. So have them at least, at least like at the bottom, just mention the fact that there's a subscription. Anytime you have a replenishment, you want to be talking about your subscription because it's, it's a no brainer that if you're running low, you should just get it on autopilot. Okay, so then the the optional secondary CTA would be like never have to think about hydration Hydrate again forever. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like so, kind of give it two options. I kind of like um, if the subscription CTA were to be secondary and like almost take more effort to click, right? It just does. just because the psychology of that to me is that they're then making a conscious decision to click the right CTA. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then they'll stay on for longer because they're really committed to it. Exactly, because I, I feel like I've, I've gone down the rabbit hole of why you should make 
getting on an email list difficult. And that means that the people who are on the list are way more engaged because it wasn't an accidental click or like a, just a, like a passing moment. It was, a, it was a decision to receive a thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I wonder if that plays out in e-commerce. If anybody's tested that, let us know. Um, we talk about that a lot in the shopping experience, like whether you should or shouldn't default to subscription in the checkout mm. situation. And I think this, this kind of replicates the checkout, right. In a, in a way, or it's, a, it, it replicates the, the product choice, like the product being one time or subscription. Yeah. In that case. Yeah. I hear that for sure. Definitely. You want to make sure that people are committing to what they're committing to and not just doing it accidentally or kind of like, okay, yeah, let me try it and then cancel. Um, for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Next. Email. Oh, never mind. Not next email. Um, so they have this questions, feedback. We'd love hearing from you. Respond directly to this email and we'll get in touch. Um, it's a distraction from the main goal of the email of trying to get people to purchase more or ideally subscribe. Um, so if you kind of want that as your brand voice to, you know, always be helpful and, and be offering help, um, just move it down so that it's not in that same block um, because it's like, wait, do I reply? Do I, you know, it's just too much all in the same point. So just move it down. And, you know, it can even be a footer where it's like, we always want your questions, you know, send them, hit reply. And um, so it's just like a, you want to make sure that your emails are really focused. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have the one F campaign. Um, and this one is kind of like what you were saying. This is sent to non-subscribers. This is sent to cart vendors. Um, and memberships can often get away with these kinds of non-purchase um, emails because they are always announcing new things. Here's what our box is. Our box is this, our box is that. Here's our new product um, versus, um, you know, just kind of like the consumable subscriptions. There's not really anything new to update. So it could get annoying for the non-customers. Um, so here's a new um, subscription um, uh, campaign for you know trying to get the subscriptions. The subject line is a little generic. It's new September box, a rotation of elevated signature scents. Um, so it just doesn't give you much to really sink your teeth into. Um, you know what's elevated signature scents? I mean, you get a sense that it's like slightly luxurious. You know that it's scents inside. Um, but these are solid scents. It's like so interesting. Um, so I feel like there's a lot more to play with there than just, you know, signature elevated scents. Um, similar kind of thing here. It says four portable solid colognes to expand your scent arsenal. Um, I think there's so many more reasons to be getting these than just to ex expand my scent arsenal. I could, I could like, you know, I don't know, pick up some dollar store, uh, you know, potpourri to expand my scent arsenal. Um, so definitely play like a little bit more to the actual benefits of the fact that it's portable and solid um, than, than just that it's, it's a scent. Here, have a scent. <laughs> um, the rest of the email is pretty solid. It's just, you know, giving the flavors, um, which, you know, you might argue like, okay, so add some more benefits, add some whatever, but flavors are such not a flavor, a scent. Um, they're so personal that, you know, you could add more to it, but people know right away, like, oh, I like sandalwood. No, I hate sandalwood. So you don't really have to work so hard in that section of the email. Makes sense? Yes. I'm wondering too, if, um, if a campaign like that would let you also kind of gather some data on that customer, um, depending on, um, this one you said is not a purchase email. It's just kind of an announcing things email. So if you were to attach this, I mean, I guess there is a shop now CTA, but if you were to drop some links in here that fed into however you're organizing your da data that shows you like which scent they'd pick, like what would you wear to your next, you know, office, party or something. I don't know. That sounds stupid, but like the next time you see someone in real life, like that would be great play off of COVID, right? Like we are now seeing people in real life. What do you want to smell like or something along those lines? Like if you put that in there and gave them a choice, 
um, just to quizify or gamify it a little bit, then you'd have like, okay, this person like, you know, might have bought this scent, but they also consider this. And now you can tag them as like someone to target if you release a new product type that has that scent flavor, right? Yeah, I that's a great um, for, for the subscriptions, you know, for the membership boxes, it kind of seems more of like, you know, they have these products and they just kind of have all sorts of products mm -hmm. and they can't really use that data so much, but for sure for the more consumable kind of stuff, um, it's great data to have to, to for your pre-purchase people, the, the pre-subscribers before their subscribers get all this data on them. And then you can be pushing the subscription in a really relevant way because you know here's what they want. And then you can kind of give them the subscription, you know, write your subscription email around the products that they're most interested in. Cool idea. Love it. Fun. All right. Current subscribers. So we have the initial order confirmation. So what I love about this email is that it just sets expectations so well. Um, sorry, I'll get to the subject line in a second because I started talking about expectations. Um, everything is so laid out and clear. Um, it's, you know, if there's a welcome, it's why you'll love it, it's how it works, it's what the perks are, it's what happens next. Like everything is just there. It's all laid out. This is an email that you can just save and you have all your information. It's, it's so clear, it's so awesome. Um, and it's just, it also has like a lot of fun to it. Not fun, but excitement. You know, why you'll love Rockbox. Um, you know, it just, you, you know, you see that smile and you're just like, yes, that's going to be me in, you know, three days. <laughs> um, it just, it really has that excitement to it. Um, the only thing that I don't love about this email is that the subject line is welcome to Rocksbox, which, you know, because it's a welcome, because it's a confirmation, it's going to get opens. Um, but you want to work a little harder to get them to open because often these emails are boring. So if I get a welcome to whatever, then sometimes I'm just thinking like, oh, it's just like a, an order confirmation. It's just going to have some boring little details. I'm not realizing that there's so much amazing content inside. Um, so even just adding something like, here's what's next, or here's how it works, or something like that teases what's inside the email. And then they can kind of expect what's inside and open it if it's relevant to them and it's relevant to everybody. So yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so now we have in upcoming order, shipping soon, um, upgrade tier. So this is for the memberships that have these extra tiers. Um, so are you a select member? Have you upgraded yet? Upgrade to select and get exclusive perks. And then there's a list of all the different perks. Um, so again, it's just clear, you know, a lot of these emails, the most standout feature of all these emails is that they're clear, especially with subscriptions. There's so many like everyone's subscription is a little bit different and they want to know that they can cancel if they don't like it and they want to know exactly what they're expecting. It's a little bit scary to just hand over your credit card and get something on repeat. You know, like we say it's a benefit, like, yay, put it on autopilot, but it actually could be very scary because it's like, wait, 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 it's on autopilot. How is it working? What's happening? So laying it out all really clearly is really helpful for people. Um, so that's just a standout feature you'll see in all these emails is making sure that it's super clear, make sure your emails are super clear. Um, something that's super awesome for this email is at the bottom, it says, wait, what are add-ons? Um, which is such brilliant clarification because like we are living this and we know what add-ons are because we like, you know, what do you mean? Like add-ons are the thing. But for someone who is not necessarily, someone who's new to subscriptions or just, you know, yeah, they haven't exactly done a membership before or anything like that. They don't necessarily know what the term is. They don't know what an add-on is. Um, so just giving them, you know, choose from over hundred products between 30 to 70% off. Um, it's just let them know exactly what their terms of add-ons are um, and, and what that actually means for the customer. So I thought this, that was a cool. This reminds me um, of in the top performer stuff that Seth dropped the link to. Um, we saw that the top, like the best performers used really clear language about like what a one-time purchase is because you'd think one-time purchase is in itself um, a thing like people would understand but actually adding in that language that says like this means this will be added to your upcoming order but not to your subscription right like it's just going to be one time that um, increased 
clarity and understanding of what clicking that CTA would do and therefore increase the likelihood that it was clicked. Yeah. Because right? if I, like, I'm not going to click something, I don't really know if that means it's going to be like forever added to my subscription. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, we, we know the lingo so well that we forget sometimes that our customers don't. <laughs> Okay, so now we have another upcoming order, but this one is for an add-on. Um, and again, it has that clarity. There's first, there's, you know, what's up next? Here's your subscription. Um, then they put the upsell and the upsell that they choose to put first is a subscription add-on um, because that's higher lifetime value. Um, so this one actually gets added to your subscription every single time. And then this one is a one-off add-on, which is kind of like the next upsell you know like if we can't get that one let's get this one they're kind of shoving everything in here um which i would love to see a test against this of like okay what's the shoving everything approach versus just like a more targeted approach um sometimes the everything together lets people pick and choose and they get to kind of decide exactly what they want and sometimes the more targeted it just helps them make a decision because they're not bombarded with choices Excellent. um um, I'm going to I'm going to make a quick interjection and tell the ARPU people in the crowd that this is coming soon from ARPU as in it's yeah. in development right now. We currently have like a one time add on, but we are going to have add this to my existing subscription and eventually you'll be able to target people who have added a one time um, in the past to see if they want to go ahead and add that to their subscription. So really okay. smart technology there playing into what people have indicated that they like to try or might like to add. How soon um, after, per Jerry's asking a question, hold up, let's go check it out. Um, how soon after purchase is, for example, Harry's add on email sent? So this one is actually sent before the next subscription is sent. So this is, it says June 29th and the box ships on July 1st. So pretty close to when it's about to ship. And over here, the next one um, is, the, um, it says, you know, want to make changes to your next box, edit products or reschedule by 11.59 tomorrow. <laughs> it's tiny print. Um, <laughs> So um, yeah, it's not like a huge window of time. Um, that would be an interesting thing to see, you know, give it five days versus just one day. Um, but, but this comes right before the next shipment. So it's like their last chance to add on and, and send, you know, get more stuff or pause or all that. Um, and this little thing is really important. This, you know, edit your products, reschedule. That's your pause that we were talking about before. Um, and yeah, you want to reduce churn, reduce cancellations um, by offering and allowing people to pause their subscriptions, edit their orders, things like that. Um, you know, you're letting them go a little bit before they go all the way out. Yeah, um, Jimmy Joy, uh, we worked with them on um, kind of understanding because they were a customer of, or they were a merchant using ARPU before pause or delay is what we call it existed. Mm -hmm. And they were looking at their recharge metrics. And once they implemented the delay feature, which allows people to go in and in two or three clicks, depending on how you set it up in the email, like you don't have to log into your portal or anything. You can say delay and pick um, two weeks, three weeks. Like you can, you can custom create as a merchant what the delay periods are going to be, right? Or they can even pick a date or they could say ship now or something like that. But um, the results that he shared, which I thought were just fascinating, were that they had what they called um, reasons for churn and they were measuring that. And one is too much product, right? So you've got more, you, your eyes were bigger than your stomach and you ordered more or you were gone and you didn't consume everything you thought you would in a given time period, right? And so their too much product churn decreased by 50% after they implemented the option to delay. Okay. And they have what we call a, um, a delay retention rate which is a successful charge after delay of like somewhere in the 50 to 60% zone. And that's what most customers who have a delay are seeing. So that means that of, 
of the people who delay, 50 to 60% of them are having a successful charge after that delay, which is a lot better than the, the rate you're going to get on sending a win back campaign to get someone who canceled because they couldn't find out, how, figure out how to delay um, to, to begin a subscription again. That's awesome. Yeah. I love the concrete numbers. That's amazing. Yeah, it was a fun conversation. I was like, tell me more. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, one more thing on this email. Um, at the end, it says this order could be $5 or less. And then there's a referral offer, um, which is really cool because subscribers, you know, are great people to refer uh, more business because they obviously love your product if they are wanting to get more and more of it. Um, but a better fit for this, a better place for this would be in the shipping or delivery because it's like in the five. So it says this order could be $5 or less, but then it says um, you get $5 off your next order. Um, so it's a little sneaky there. Um, and so because, because of that, you don't have to distract from all the upsells um, and it's not even going to be valid on this order. So move it out after it gets delivered, let that be the nurturing component of that email after it's delivered, that's when they could start being referred. Also, you know, they just got the product in their hands. That's when they want to be referring their friends. That's when they're excited about it. So it's just a better, a better place for it on all three of those levels. Okay, so now we have shipping confirmation and my thing is out of order, sorry. Um, so this is, I, I just had to include a bad example. Um, so this is just a shipping confirmation. That's all it is. It's just a shipping confirmation. It just has the address and the information and that's it. And it's so painful to see because it's this beautifully designed email. Like they spent time and energy on this, but it's such a dead end. There's nothing else. Okay, yeah, they could track their order. Yay. <laughs> There's so much more that the brand can be doing. They can be pushing to social. They can be offering um, perks. They could be offering an upsell. There's just, you know, what do you have to offer? Even sending them to the blog would be a better option than just nothing. Um, you know, e even even getting them excited and talking about the product, you know, um, you know how we source the best uh, food colorings and, you know, just all this, you know, educational stuff could be a great um a great uh, lead in point. Um, you want to either be tapping into excitement or pushing them down the journey, giving them more touch points, but just nothing is, you're just losing an amazing opportunity. The open rates on shipping confirmations is so high that you don't want to just lose your people. They opened it, let them do something else. Once they already opened it, put something on the bottom of every single transactional email. So there's my rant. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, I think, you know, companies that do this well, like, especially if it's something I'm going to cook with, they're, they're giving me like a recipe Oh, fun. or, yeah. you know, like based on what I bought, right. Because sometimes you still have to go buy all the other things you're going to put in the recipe with that one product. Right. Like, so it's kind of like, what are you going to cook with your chicken stock? right and then you're like oh I might like to cook that well let me go ahead and make well, sure I get yeah. those I love you know, that things difference. that can help you anticipate or prepare for are you ready for this to be delivered like are you ready to enjoy this the moment it arrives like if it's a smoothie mix then like is there room in the freezer or do you have like the yogurt you're going to mix it with or what like those kinds of things um That's I think go cool. a long way yeah because a lot of times um, people will ask for referrals at this point, um, you know, especially with just like the, the one-time purchase customers, the, on the post-purchase, it'll be like, Hey, refer your friend or join a loyalty program. And it's, it's, I didn't even get the product yet. I don't know if I want to join a loyalty program. I, I don't know if I'm loyal to you yet. I don't, I don't want to tell my friends about it. Cause I don't know if I like it yet. I didn't get it yet. Um, so I love that idea of really, really thinking deeply into where they are, they didn't get it yet. So how can you get them excited? What can you do to, you know, get them ready for your product? It's a cool idea. Okay, so now we have the delivery confirmation um, and <clears throat> the subject line is, <clears throat> excuse me, your Dia box has arrived, um, which this is a very common subject line for delivery emails. And I have such a bone to pick with it because if I got it, 
I know it's here. I'm not going to open this email because all it says to me is it's here. And it's like, yeah, 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 great. Cool. I got it. I don't know that there's so much more inside the email. And if I didn't get it, um, then all the content within this email, all the, all the content is like telling them what to do with their delivery. I didn't get it yet. Um, and instead I'm going to be like, where's my, where's my product? I didn't get it yet. Should I get in touch with support? There's no like, Hey, if you didn't get it yet, let's, let's dig to the bottom of this. It's just telling them exactly what to do with it. So this is a subscription where they can send back the stuff that they don't like or buy the stuff that they do like. Um, and it's all about, you know, reviewing and rating the stuff um, <clears throat> and telling them, you know, um, check out for the stuff that, that you do like. Um, so <clears throat> if I didn't get it yet, this email is totally irrelevant. All right, so the expectation part is nice and clear. Um, and then the button is check out now, but the, all the content of the email is about reviewing the products. It's, you know, your feedback helps your stylist create the perfect box. Um, all these, um, these little uh, boxes here and testimonials is all about how the stylist is getting to know their style. Um, so the button being check out is a little bit of a mismatch to the rest of the email. And as well, reviewing might actually be an easier sell than checkout. I, I am not a thousand percent sold on that. I would like wanna, you know, have some data and see, you know, are people, do they just wanna check out? They love the stuff, they wanna buy it already. Or maybe they wanna think about it and leave a review. And then once they leave a review, they're kind of like, yeah, you know what? I'm saying all these amazing things about it, let me buy it. Um, so that's just a something to think about kind of thing. Um, but um, these little testimonials are, are such great little mini winbacks because let's say you get this curated box of stuff and you don't like anything in it. All these little testimonials are about how the stylist learns the style from them and from what they're sending back, from what, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of like, oh, okay. So I didn't love this box, but if I send it all back, then they'll know that I didn't like any of it and they'll send some new stuff. Excellent. So okay. So um i might be jumping up like putting the cart before the horse do you have an example of a delivery confirmation in here for a product that is not like part of something that involves like teaching a stylist to learn your behavior or your preferences or things like that what if it's really just um you know uh smoothie mix so then a great thing would be a recipe uh, if you didn't put mm -hmm. that beforehand. Right. Uh, or, you know, a, a really common one that you'll see is, um, you know, take a picture and share it on social. Um, something that, you know, helps them activate um, or leave a review. Often you'll get, you know, a leave a review after delivery, which makes sense because they got the product. Now they can, you know, share, um, mm -hmm. you know, so, or an upsell, but again, you're going to be sending them your, you know, add to order email soon before the next subscription. So I think it's a little too soon after delivery to be asking them. It makes more sense to send it with the next order. Okay. All right. Okay. So now we got some perks. So I only have one perk email, um, but you could go crazy with perk emails. You can, you know, you could send discounts, you could send exclusive access, you could send exclusive webinars, you could send exclusive communities. There's so much that you can do um, with your perks, you know, whatever perks you are offering as a business to your members and your subscribers, email them about them, tell them about them. It doesn't, you don't need any special occasions to be sending them, just send them the perks, just talk to them about it. Um, you might've talked to them about it three months before, that's fine, send it to them again. Um, they want to know this information. These are things that are exciting for them. These are perks. Um, you can't email too often when it's about free stuff or exciting stuff. I mean, you can, but not really. Um, so this one is uh, that they can get previous boxes um, that they missed with member pricing. So it's kind of like, oh, you didn't get that. Um, I love, I love the subject line. It's like no FOMO um, because you know you weren't a member then, but you basically can get it now also. Um, and it's a great it's a great upsell because it's it's tied to what they are already getting, um, but it really feels like a privilege because they're getting it at member pricing before they were a member. Um, and the whole thing is just so nice and personal. There's any little GIF or GIF, however you pronounce it, um, and the whole thing is like afraid you missed out. Don't be as a welcome for joining Gentleman's Box. We'd like to extend you this offer to get any previous boxes available on our store at member pricing. 
And it's just, it's like clear, but it just has a little bit of, it just feels personal, probably because it's also like pretty sparse design wise. Um, and, and the whole FOMO angle, it just feels really nice and personal and clear. All right, churn subscribers. All right, so when a subscriber cancels, um, you could just, you know, send them the confirmation or you could be awesome like shave kit. Um, so they have a subject line, you left, that's okay. You know what, let me read the email and then we'll go through the comments. Okay, I noticed you canceled your deliveries from shave kit today. The top five reasons for leaving are, I'm overstocked, too many blades. And then it says, you know, log in and, and pause and you could change the frequency, just like what we were just talking about. I lost my job. Drop me a line, I'll add you a free razor to look sharp for your next interview. How awesome is that? I bought it for my husband or boyfriend. We broke up. Plenty more fish in the sea. You deserve better. Like, that's just a nice little fun personal, like, you just feel like you like the brand. <clears throat> I moved abroad. Do you ship internationally? Not yet, but get in touch when you're back. So that might come as a disappointment, but it feels like, oh, okay, cool, fine. I, you know, I, now I know to, to get in touch when I'm back or to be in touch with them because they said not yet. So maybe this could work out. Not, I'm not feeling yucky about that. I lost or broke my handle, replied to this email and will send you a replacement next day delivery. That's awesome. Uh, did I miss any reasons? Let me know by replying to this email. Um, so the one bad thing or slightly less awesome thing um, is the subject line. You left, that's okay. Um, it, it doesn't feel like there's anything more in the email that maybe they're going to win me back. Um, so it just feels like you left, that's okay. So it does have that personal angle. And it might also have that curiosity angle where it's like, that's okay. I'm like, wait, why is that okay? Why are you happy that I left? Um, but it's, you know, teasing what's inside a little bit more um, would, would be helpful. Um, or yeah, if this was on the bottom of the like actual official cancellation email, that could uh, really help too, instead of just sending this as a separate one-off cancellation email. Um, so Again, the overstock thing, the product, letting them know that they can pause probably wins them so many win backs. Um, it just, you know, it meets that objection and it gets them, like this is immediately after they're canceling. So it's really helpful for them to just, you know, oh, wait, 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 I didn't mean to cancel. You let me just pause instead. Um, and then these little two things over here of I did I lose my job, I lost a broken handle, um, probably earn, earns them like amazing loyalty um, because, you know, they just canceled. They might not be feeling so loyal, but now it's like, oh, wow, you're awesome. You're doing that. That's super. Um, and then as well, the little line at the bottom of, did I miss any reasons? Okay, reply, just keeps the conversation open. These are customers that canceled and now they just kind of feel like they got this personal goodbye um, and that it's from an awesome company. So it's a cool email. Okay, and then we have feedback. Um, so the subject lines, we let you down, help us understand how. This is such a common theme with a lot of um, cancellation emails or these kinds of emails um, because, you know, and, and it's, it's such a shame because people cancel for all sorts of reasons. It's not necessarily anything that you did. And if you're thinking, you know, if you're putting yourself in that position, then that's how your customers are going to view you. You really don't have to be like, oh, we did you wrong. No, you didn't. You ran your business. I mean, maybe you did, but you don't know that you did. Um, and if you just come at from a place of confidence, it can also often get you your subscribers back instead of just, you know, always kind of shifting the blame on yourself. I think um, you could, you could like alternatively just like tilt that a little bit with something that's more like, um, was it something we did? Question mm, mark. Or, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, like just kind of like, make it playful enough to prompt that click through so that they can give you feedback, but they know that you're kind of playing with it a little bit instead of self-deprecating. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. It's just like, we let you down. No, maybe you didn't. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess they consider every cancellation, like we let you down. Um, we weren't perfect. We didn't ship across the world. Um, so, um, so this email I thought was just a feedback email, right? It's, you know, we let you down, help us understand how we're listening, help us improve. They're asking for a survey, but then there's two sections that's, we're sorry to see you go. We get it. Your subscription number, blah, 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 has been canceled. And then at the bottom, you will no longer be billed for any future orders, all the legal technical confirmation stuff. And I'm just like, well, what? 
if I got this email in my inbox, we let you down, help us understand how I would not realize that this is my confirmation for my cancellation. And I would not know how to search for it. I would not know how to find it. Um, and I would be a little bit annoyed if I was looking for it because it just does not at all look like a cancellation. So you want to make sure anyway, legally, your transactional emails need to be 20% marketing and 80% transactional. Um, I believe I'm quoting the right stats. Um, so this is just way too shifted out of whack um, and it's going to lead to a lot of confusion. Um, but it's amazing that they are asking for feedback. That is a good thing to do. So they get points for that. Okay, so rewrite again on that and the subject line then changes to like cancellation confirmation, mm -hmm. colon, was it us or you? Something we did. <laughs> yeah, it was it something we did. Yeah, and then restructuring that email to have the the most critical information to them be the mm -hmm. alpha content of the email. So instead of this, we're listening, help us improve. Bring that your your order has been canceled. Like that's the thing that they want confirmation of, right? Mm -hmm. Then deliver this. Um, hey, could you help us understand why and improve? And you can always send a follow-up too. Like if that, if, if you think it's going to be skipped at the bottom of an email that they're not going to notice, then, mm -hmm. then send another one that looks like this, you know, without the subscription stuff, the cancellation stuff. Um, and just, you know, another, another point where they yeah. can give feedback. You canceled. We're curious. Oh, wow. You're on fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think this is the last one. No, this is the second to last one, I believe. Um, so here we have a win back. Um, by the way, you could send your win backs to your paused people or to your fully churned people because they paused. So they are sort of, they're like a semi churn. They're like a funny little, uh, you know, twilight zone um, where you could kind of just keep reminding them that, you know, they might want to re start up again. You might want to do this, like, let's say three months out, six months out, just kind of look at your life cycle and see what makes sense. You know, if they cancel for one month, that usually means they have too much product or they went away or something like that. But if they're canceled for a while, you might want to send them a win back. Um, so you've missed over 30 different snacks, which is just such an awesome subject line because it's so specific. It just, it's like, wait, 30. Whoa. I didn't realize I've been gone for so long. Um, and then, um, snacks you missed while you were away, take a look at some of our most recent snack box themes and resubscribe to experience them for yourself. So this is not super clear. I'm not understanding if I get these boxes once I resubscribe, or are you just like giving me some FOMO and reminding me to resubscribe so I get the new box? It's not totally clear. It could be that it's clear to the subscribers because they know how the subscription works. But again, you're not, it's not going to hurt you to just re-clarify the subscription terms a lot might be going on in their life. It might be six months later, they might not remember. So clarifying terms could be super useful. Um, and, and then it's just a nice tease, like showing the different boxes that, um, that they um, missed out on. Um, and then at the end, it's wanna look at what's coming, check out the upcoming box and be sure to subscribe today so you don't miss it. So, you know, again, also nice and clear. Um, and it's important in case I see these two and I'm like, eh, uh, I'm okay missing those ones. Here's one that, maybe is a, another option, you know, that I'm excited about. Okay, we are at the end. Um, thank you for staying on. Um, so let's recap real quick. Um, writing subscription emails and increase AOV, CLV, CTR, and all the other good acronyms. Um, good subscriber emails are critical to keeping the married relationship exciting. Subscriber emails get a lot of airtime, so make sure that you're taking advantage of them. They get great open rates, great read rates, get click-through rates, so make sure that you're not just doing what the candy company did and just giving the information you want to continue the conversation. Um, you want to help non-subscribers become subscribers. You want to help subscribers stay subscribers and you want to use turn subscribers to get, give you some good data or try to get them back. Um, so I would love if you can not be a stranger because this was super fun. Um, you could get a free uh, re-engagement playbook at nikkiellas.com slash email playbooks. Um, and then you'll also be, you can choose to be added to the newsletter and then we could really stay in touch and not be strangers. Um, and I don't know if you want to stay on longer for questions, but I'm happy to take any questions. Excellent. Any questions, y'all put them in the chat. I have at least one right now because you made me think about it and it feels like it's like a functionality that should exist at some point. Um, 
within the scope of what recharge merchants do, I I am unfamiliar with um, if there is a pause option, but I know that we offer a delay, which just pushes the next shipment out whatever time period they have requested that, right? And so on occasion, someone will just keep pushing it out. And um, I'd love your thoughts on putting together emails for that segment of customer or subscriber who has delayed like potentially two or three times, right? Um, because it's not necessarily a win back because they're still in your system, but it almost feels like they need to be made aware that what they are doing is not actually canceling, it's punting. And, and kind of like the critical transactional information is, do you want to keep punting this subscription or would you like to change something? Mm -hmm. Right? Like it, it feels like it. So I'm just curious if you've encountered that or have any ideas about the best approach to take um, with someone who's in that phase. Yeah, I think it would make sense for a company if they get a lot of that. If they just get a few, then I don't know that it would make sense to put the resources mm -hmm. to that. But yeah, if they see that happening a lot, then I think the most important thing, honestly, would be to get some information about why the people are doing that. You know, like, are they sending too much product in their boxes? And that's why people are delaying. Are people, I don't know, like if they have such a big segment that's doing that, then there's obviously something that people are not happy about that they need to keep delaying, that they're not canceling, but they're delaying. So kind of understanding why. Yeah, to be clear, I know. don't I don't have um, metrics to like say there's a big, like, I don't know what chunk of people who delay are like multi-delay delayers. <laughs> <laughs> I think they exist in my mind they exist like someone is doing this like yeah. but you're right it could be such a marginal amount of people that the juice is not worth the squeeze to like follow up with them in a special way maybe mm -hmm. they should just go on to a list of people that customer service is um, reaching out to or something along those lines like hey you've delayed this five times can we help you <laughs> what's going right. on <laughs> all right so marcus asked a question um marcus do you want to come on and ask it or do you want us to just read it out for you a little jeopardy moment with the background music read it out okay marcus <laughs> asks could you reiterate the difference between subscriptions and memberships and how they'll affect your email planning Sure. So it's actually pretty small. I was like, can I make this into a bullet point in the promo stuff? I don't know. It's just cheating. Um, so basically the um, biggest difference, let's see if I can find it. I mean, eventually, um, but I'll just wait. I feel like it was a blue background screen it or was. a teal background yeah. screen. Um, I'll I'll guess, and then you can correct me. Um, in terms of the difference between subscriptions, there you go, there you go, you found it. <laughs> now I will let her read it. And say, <laughs> well, I wanted to hear your guess. Oh, well, um, my, my thought is subscription equal, um, someone is subscribing to like a recurring uh, same item being delivered over and over. And then membership, you were relating more to like a curated box. So it's not necessarily the same item, right? But it's like the same company sending a new curated box. Those definitions and terms might get a little funky with our crowd because um, some recharge merchants are selling the same item month after month, but it is like a membership to that item, right? And so like in addition to the physical good, they're also in a Facebook group or a like a community of some sort. So it goes beyond the product. It's like an experience that is hinged on that subscription that arrives monthly. So gets a little sticky in there, but I think what you were saying in terms of email planning was that you kind of have to like very well know who you're sending to and why and what you should and shouldn't send them because 
uh, you indicated like one-time upsells was more appropriate for subscribers than potentially for like the membership curated box crew. What else did we hit on in that section? Um, and then the curated boxes, they're usually, they have tiers. So they uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of upgrades. Um, and then just, you know, in terms of the delivery, um, if it's a consumable, then you want to, what was it that we said with the recipes The you know, making sure that you're, you're shipping your delivery, your, um, the pre-ship, the delivery and the, and the pre-ship, ship and delivery, um, are just paying attention to the differences where it's, you know, if it's a box, then it's not necessarily something they're using over and over again. So replenishment, thinking about that. Um, and then also memberships often have more new things so you can be promoting them more often and talking to the non-customer segments. Um, so there's just a couple different things mm -hmm. that, you know, yeah, knowing what your product is and how it relates to your customers can help you with the planning. So the biggest tip I think anyone could walk away with is audit your own flows, right? Like subscribe to your product as if you were an in the wild customer and become a subscriber of that product mm -hmm. or, or maybe even buy it one time and see what you get hit with between being one time customer and subscriber, right? And audit the flow and with each email, I think the, the rubric you've got to use is, does it contain critical information? If it's, especially if it's transactional, does it serve me or the brand, right? And so each of those um, needs to be checked off. Like how does it, uh, what information does it deliver? Is that critical information? And then is it coming across as spam or service? Mm -hmm. Because, the reason emails from certain brands get low open rates is not because it's a bad subject line. It's because they've built a reputation for sending unnecessary emails that are not relevant to like the person receiving them. So like, I guess to go back to Nikki's analogy, you would say, would I want to still be married to this person if this is how they were treating me? right? Like do this, do this, do this, instead of here's this for you. Here's this for you. Here's this for you. Yeah. Cool. Um, any other questions coming out? I think the, the last point I could make, um, and I will ask you, we went through like a welcome sequence, right? And it was like welcome email, et cetera. Um, when we had Kristen on the show, Kristen LaFrance, um, she talked about this concept of using those first emails very strategically to build and um, solidify like establish and solidify the relationship between the brand and the, the subscriber, like the product subscriber and the email subscriber, right? Like if you don't in those first three to five emails, build an expectation from them that you are sending things of value, that's when no subject line can save you. Mm -hmm. Yep. So yeah. like maybe put 80% of your effort <laughs> into the... Welcome. Into the welcome sequence, right? Into the things that like determine whether later on they stick, they keep opening or not, mm -hmm. right? Because if you teach them to expect great things, then opening. yeah, then then it's not such a big deal like what the subject line is because they mm -hmm. they know they've gotten good things from you before. So is yeah, that recipe in there or is that like makeup tip in there? If you if you're selling like subscription cosmetics, are you always bringing them fresh ways to use your product or like highly relevant upsells instead of upsells that make absolutely no sense? Mm -hmm. to yeah, what an analogy that I always like to bring is like, if my mom sends me an email that says no subject, I'm still going <laughs> to open it because it's from my mom. <laughs> but if, you know, if someone, if a brand sends me no subject, I mean, I would probably open it because it's interesting when brands make mistakes, but <laughs> um <laughs> 
you know, it, it's it's not really about the subject. Subject lines get all the, you know, they're, they're the hero, they get all the, the, the attention, but it really is the center name much more than the subject line. <laughs> I love it. I think one other tip we could maybe get into with subscriptions at some point is to have them coming from a person mm -hmm. instead of the brand, um, just in the sender line. Like if, if you have people at the company that can be like the face of your brand subscription relationships mm -hmm. or a mascot. Um, I saw a funny one recently that was like from your achy knees <laughs> and it was it was for some like ointment or something and like like that's creative that's fun build mm -hmm. build reasons for people to open your emails that go beyond um the like the content that is in them like make it more make it a conversation that you're having with them especially also pay attention to like, yeah, because it's a subscription and you're spending a lot of time with them, you know, pay attention to like the different kinds of emails. So maybe you want to send your transactional emails from the brand name so that people take it seriously. It's very like official. Here's my confirmation mm -hmm. transactional. Like I know that I know what this is. I could search for it really easily, but then the perk emails, you know, where it's just like, Hey, I want to introduce you to our new Facebook group that could totally come from a person. And that feels so much more of a relationship with the brand when it comes from a person than when it just comes from the brand. So definitely, you know, thinking about that. And, and that could also be like a nice way for you to segue into more of the, the personal sending and the plain text emails, because I know that a lot of e-commerce brands have a hard time with that because they invest so much in product photography and beautiful emails. And it's like, wait, I'm just supposed to send like this boring plain text email. So, so play with it, you know, don't send all of them, just the ones that make sense. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, kind of, and that's a great testing point too. Like, okay, how did it go? Did it go well? Um, and then, you know, building up like that. So do the audience, uh, do the audit, create a balance and then always be improving it. Like watch, oh. watch the cohorts, especially with subscriptions, because you can see like we introduced this three months ago and we are seeing higher LTVs mm -hmm. um, because of it or something like that. And the last thing I will note is I got an email, I don't know how long ago, but I thought it was quite clever because the um, person's signature was like so-and-so taco evangelist. <laughs> and like if that's the tone your brand can take in your fun subscription messaging or your curated box like you know messaging like maybe that's the right play like you've got your serious messages and then you've got your ones that are, are more from like a person or a team of people at the brand who like you see are like you know the flavor creators or or this mm -hmm. and it gives your brand more of a human aspect that then strengthens that relationship anything you can think to add to this conversation nikki we can stop the screen share i don't see any other questions coming in but it was such a delightful conversation super fun. A pleasure to have you where can people find you i know you had it at the end of your slide but there's some people who will only be listening um on audio so it's like nikki elbaz.com correct yeah. And then what was that um, resource that you were sharing? It's a free re-engagement uh, playbook, e oh, re-engagement cool. email sequence playbook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it's it's humongous. It's awesome. Um, and it's NikkiElbaz.com, N-I-K-K-I-E-L-B-A-Z.com um, slash email hyphen playbooks. Okay. Let's hyphen that is that one, right? <laughs> the hyphen is like the dash. The okay. little, not the slash. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna try it. I guess we'll see if I use the dot com slash what was it? Email dash playbook. email dash playbook. You can tell me if I got the dash correct. And for all of y'all listening and joining yeah, us good. here live today, it's been a pleasure. We will see you again, I think, in two weeks. I don't quite have the speaker all lined up. Oh, perfect. It was playbooks plural. Um, but uh, if you have people that you think you would like us to bring on so that you can tap into their expertise and knowledge base, let us know. Um, ARPU is committed to helping subscription sellers improve the process, um, both on the merchant end and the subscriber end. Thanks again. Bye.